New Song LA. Wherever you are, we invite you to put your hands together. I want to wish you a happy holidays. We're in the holiday spirit, so we're going to sing some familiar uh, Christmas and worship songs with you this morning. We invite you to join us and sing along. Let's sing together. Here we go.
God, that is our prayer that um, that we would see you today. God, um, we've come for no other reason but to worship you. God, be glorified and be lifted high in this place. We've come to worship Jesus. Sing all ye citizens. 
give you all the glory, all of the honor. It belongs to you. You alone are worthy of all of our worship. You alone are worthy of all of our praise. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to New Song Los Angeles. Whether you are here with us in person, you are joining us online. I know a lot of us are traveling today. And so if you're on the road and you're listening in or you're watching online, welcome. Merry Christmas. Today is a very different kind of service than we usually have. And so why don't you come on in and we're going to sing together Christmas songs and we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ together. Enjoy Christmas hymns. It's like we only sing them a couple of times a year. There's a few folks that really like those. Um, this is the time for us to enjoy them together. 
These are often hymns and songs that have been sung for hundreds of years in different languages and different translations, and they help us get a picture of who God is and who it is that we celebrate. So let's sing together, O Come, All You Faithful. Yes,
song family how y'all doing yeah. y'all doing great yeah. how could you not be well after the worship um i tell you man this is beautiful we have an amazing pastor not only preaches well but can sing and play and yeah. and lead us so this morning we're really excited to be together happy christmas eve to everyone those who are watching online we love you and sending our thoughts with you and today we have a special friend for those who don't know excuse me too my name is joshua norwood I'm the associate pastor here, uh, oversee our youth and our worship ministry. And so today I have a special guest with us from youth, and I'm going to make a shameless plug that if you want to serve in the space to impact the next generation, the youth ministry is a space to be in, middle school and high school, even though some of them may cheat with some of the games we play, <laughs> that they, <laughs> who shall remain nameless? I'm, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. It's actually me that does it. Um, <laughs> but... No, it's, it's just a great place to be, just to kind of pour into love into our next generation. And so we have with us this morning um, our sister Jocelyn. And uh, I just wanted her to share a little bit about what we've been talking about in Christmas. So we've done a series called Grateful. And just kind of looking at how we can be grateful during the holidays. I know that for a lot of us, sometimes the holidays actually bring stress or we get really busy. But we wanted to focus this year on how we could be grateful. So could you maybe share a little bit about what we kind of talked about in, in, our, uh, in our session? Sure. Um, well, I mean, for me, I'm just grateful that I get to spend it with uh, my parents and my brother and that we're all 
able to be home and together um, for the holidays and that we get to go and visit family and have the ability to be able to travel. Um, I mean, it's important, <coughs> sorry, my voice. Uh, it's important to like remember the small things and the big things um, because some people have big things to be grateful for and some people the small things are really what is there for them. And so it's it's always important to remember that God provides through both big and small and not to overlook either. Yes, yes. I don't know if I caught that. God provides both big and small. When we look at God provides all of it. Um, I love Joycelyn because Joycelyn is, let me also tell you something about her too. Like when I first got here, she was the sweetest and the most welcoming, but she has a lot of insight. Um, and so can you also just share really briefly for you, like what does Christmas mean? Well, I mean, you know, Christmas is like, for like world stuff, Christmas is like decorations and presents and family and like what the lists are and then um, making all of the food. Um, it's also a time of like family and friends and who you choose to really like spend your time with and who you care and love about. Um, and then spiritually it's about, you know, God sent his son down and this is the time when we're very grateful and happy that he was born and that that happened and that event exists. Um, and then that it's just a reminder of like a season of hope and of, of kindness. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing, Joyce Justin. Uh, I have to give a special shout out to, we want to both give a special shout out to our sister Stella, our church Stella. admin. She, I don't know if she's, she's in here. She's now, she walk out, she's here. But we love Stella. Stella's actually one of our uh, high school um, leaders, and she's done an amazing job really pouring into the students and loving on them, so we want to love on her. And also just invite those, if you're looking for a new space, we have the new year coming up. I know a lot of us do our little resolutions and do our goals, but if you want to serve more, this is just one area in which that you can, you know, that, that you have available for you to serve. And if you're interested, maybe come talk to me a little bit after service. Can I, y'all please give another round of applause yeah. to Jocelyn. We love you. Thank you. Um, also, as we're looking at getting connected, we have our, our codes on our chairs that we would love to connect with you. If you are if your first time visiting us or if you've been here for a long time, or OG as we call it, we still want to get to know you more. Um, all, with, with our connection cards, you can also put in prayer requests. You can get plugged into small groups, but it's just a way for us to get to know you and for you guys to get to know us a little bit. So if you have your phones, please feel free right even now. They'll, they'll, you'll see like your QR codes on the back of your chairs or either in front um, that you can scan. And so as we get ready just to move into this season, we also have another special presentation from our team. So I have three, three friends that are going to join me, and we have a special message for you guys. They may be familiar to some of you. They may look like a certain pastor. This is our wish for you guys this morning. Wish, wish you, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kid. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Them boys got talent. They're going to be something one day. Listen, they already something now, but I can't wait. It, let me tell you, it was so fun teaching, uh, actually learning from them, because I don't sing barber shop quartet, as you can probably tell. <laughs> but I love that they worked so hard. They came up with, you know, the song. Andrew told me what I was going to do, and so I say yes, I love it. Um, also, as we get ready just to go further in our service, 
there is a space that we just want where we all can give during this season. And so I want those to know, like, if you're visiting for the first time, you know, this is not a cover charge. We're not expecting, you know, <laughs> to give. But this, if this is your church and your family and your space and you want to give right now with the time that we set aside to give to God because it's him that's given us all that we have. And it's a portion that we give back to him. So I'm going to pray over the offering and then we'll uh, move forward. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, God, that even today, God, that we celebrate a day that you gave us hope, that you provided salvation for us through Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that even as we move, God, um, let us not get distracted on what the season really means, God. I pray, Father God, that as we get ready to give a portion of what you've given to us, Lord, I pray that you just would touch our hearts, God, that you just would receive it, Lord. Um, I pray that it would be done out of gratefulness, Lord. And I know that for some of us, we may not have it to give um, this year, God. And I pray, Lord, that you just will touch those and bless those, Lord, and help us to give what we do have, whether it's our time, whether it's our service, God, whether it's just our love and kindness to others, Lord. We love you and pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christmas to all of you. My name is Dan. In case you don't know who I am, I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm so glad we get to spend a little bit of time together today. It is Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Eve, you know what that means, right? You, me you know that it means it's almost time for presents. Okay, kids, uh, you guys are in the service with us today, so I want you to give a shout if you're excited about presents. Oh, really? Okay, parents, pa pa did you hear that, parents? That means they have an expectation that you're giving them some lousy gifts. Okay, kids, for real, if you're excited about your presents, you can go ahead and give out a shout or you can clap your hands. Who's excited about your presents? You know, speaking of presents, I need some help. So I need four kids, four volunteers. Just go ahead and raise your hand. We got one over here. Um, uh, Kara in the back. Come on over here. Let's see. Um, Kayla over here and one more. How about you over here, right over here? Come on up. You guys can just go ahead and line up over here. Those of you that I called upon, come on over here. I need you to help me open up a few gifts, okay? So just go ahead and stand over here. I'm going to hand one to you, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and open it. You might need to set these things down. So let's go ahead and set those down for now, okay? So I'm going to hand you a couple of things, and go ahead and start unwrapping them, and you're going to help us all see what there is, and you're going to hand them to me once you've unwrapped them, okay? Go ahead and unwrap them. The suspense. What is in these gifts? Who's going to open it first? Who's going to do it the most delicately? Who's going to rip it? Who's going to unfold it very neatly with no rips at all? Oh, the first one is, what is this? It is a toothpaste and a toothbrush. Not sponsored, by the way. 
toothbrush. Oh, what is this? It's coffee. Coffee. Oh, wh oh, what's in here? I wonder what's in this box over here. Oh, it's oh, it's so nicely done. In here, it is. Oh, it's a school uniform shirt. And what else do we have here? Oh, we have instant oatmeal. Instant oatmeal. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what these all are, but to thank you for helping, here you go. Okay, thank you for helping. And I will take the garbage here. Thank you very much. And make sure you also take your candle and your box. Here you go. All right. Thank you guys very much for helping. So what do all of these things have in common? A school uniform shirt, coffee, toothbrush and toothpaste, and oatmeal. They're morning things, but they're things that we all need, or some of us need. Some of us need the coffee in the morning. They're the things that we use to get ready. They're the things that we use to prepare for the day. And today, what we're talking about is preparation. What it means for us to get ready for what's to come. You see, we've been talking about this story of Jesus. And, you know, we all know the story. I'm just going to rehash it. At the very beginning, we hear in the Bible that there are these two women, Elizabeth and her cousin Mary. And Elizabeth has pregnant and out of a miraculous sort of environment, miraculous turn of events where she becomes pregnant in her older age. And she knows that she is going to have a child that is important but Mary also is having a baby. And so they laugh and they rejoice together because this child, John, who would be born, become John the Baptist, and this child, who would be named Jesus, would have an important part to play in the story of God. And so they are pregnant and celebrating and so excited about what's happening and what, what they're getting ready for. And then the angel appears to Mary to tell her what's going to be going on. And she's afraid and she's young. But yet she faces that moment with courage and they journey on donkey. That must be so uncomfortable to be pregnant on a donkey. Speaking of pregnancies and all the babies, Eli Hosaka was born on mo last Monday. So congratulations uh, to Kalei and Leah, Hosaka. Wow, we really are having a baby boom here at the church. But imagine, uh, there's a few of you that are pregnant right now in the room. Imagine as you are now riding on a donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. No, thank you. But they did that. They rode on the donkey probably as slow as they could just so that it wouldn't be too uncomfortable. But when they finally got to Bethlehem, all the places were booked up. The relatives, the extended relatives, their homes, all the guest rooms were taken because everybody was going home. So like their cousins and their second cousins. Some of you are here together because you're in town because you're here with your family. It's like that. It's like when all the people descend in one place. Some of you that are joining us online or maybe watching the service a little bit later, you've traveled somewhere because you're all gathering together with family in some other place. That was what was happening. They gathered together and there was no space for them. And so they had to kind of take over the place that used to be for the animals. I'm sure they cleaned it up a little bit. But they made space for Joseph and Mary. And the baby was born. And people began to visit. People from the family for sure and other people probably in Bethlehem because actually, I mean, they, people were related. People knew each other. And then there was these shepherds that heard about what was going on because they had been told by an angel that the Savior was coming. So they went and they came to visit the baby. And later on, magi, um, <coughs> these people from far away came together and they also came to worship and offer their sacrifices and, and, and gifts to Jesus. This is a story that we're all familiar with. We know this story. If you've grown up in the church, and even if you didn't grow up with the church, you hear this story enough during the holiday season because it's just a part of our cultural landscape. 
we know the story of Jesus. But what happens afterwards? What happens after Jesus is born and all the fanfare is gone? It was time to get ready. Today we're going to be in Luke chapter 2. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it today, um, but we're going to look in Luke chapter 2. You see, not long after Jesus was born, probably actually before the Magi came into town, so they didn't have wealth, they didn't have these expensive gifts, Joseph and Mary did what they were supposed to do. They went to the temple to have their child's dedicated. We recently had a child dedication. We've got a few more coming on the way. But dedication was just a time, a, 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 con a sacred moment in which you would take your little child to the temple and commit your child to the Lord and to the Lord's service. Let me read for you from this passage. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it was written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Actually, that sacrifice, the two young pigeons, was for people that could not afford the bigger gift. There were other things that people would give if they had money. Um, and so this is an indication that, in that at that time, Joseph and Mary were quite poor. When Joseph, in, in this particular passage, we see a couple of characters that are celebrating who Jesus is. We have, we have Simon, we have Simeon, we have Hannah. And then here at the end of this section, Luke records, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required of the law, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. You know, we don't hear a lot in the Christmas story about this period of time of Jesus growing up. Sometimes I like to think about Jesus as an adolescent because I have adolescent children. And sometimes if you've, I mean, those of you that are old enough, you've been an adolescent at some point in your life. Some of you have adolescent children and you know, either from experience as an adolescent or as a parent of adolescents, that that is not an easy time, right? I mean, did Jesus have acne? <laughs> I mean, they didn't have kind of the skincare treatments that we have now, right? Did, you know, I mean, how did, Je did Jesus feel, feel peer pressure from the other kids in the neighborhood? You know, like what was going on in, in Jesus's life? We don't have a whole lot of information other than the fact that he grew and he became strong. It began with Joseph and Mary committing him to the Lord. This was a step of preparation. All of what led up eventually, because eventually in the Bible, it kind of fast forwards to the time that he's just about 30, 30 years old. And so there's this whole gap, but what happens in between? We know that he grew. He grew. He grew in knowledge. He began to learn things. He began to experience the world. He began to see things so that he would be able to preach and teach and lead others to God. Preparation. Even Jesus had to go through a season of preparation that eventually leads to his own baptism. Jesus had to go through preparation. So, Jesus had to prepare. That's part of the story. There's another person that's a part of the bigger story, and that's his cousin, that who I mentioned earlier, John. John prepared also the way for Jesus. The whole point of John the Baptist's ministry was to make straight the path or help other people come to know that there was Jesus. Jesus prepared, Jesus was the target, if you will, the end goal of John's ministry. His whole point was to make sure that other people were ready for this guy. Not necessarily for him. I mean, John the Baptist was weird. He was weird, eccentric. He wore camel hair suits. He probably didn't shower. He probably stank. He ate locusts out in the wild and honey. 
He was a weird guy. Really, I mean, she's trying to imagine that, a disheveled guy. That was Jesus' cousin. But he had an important job to do, which was to prepare people, to help people know that there was somebody that was coming that was so important named Jesus. Preparation. Jesus had to prepare. John the Baptist prepared the way. What about us? Will you prepare yourself for Jesus? What does that mean? What does it mean for us to put ourselves in a place to be ready for Jesus? As Christ followers, those of us that believe that Jesus is Lord, we also believe that not only are we awaiting the birth of Jesus, but we're also awaiting the return, the time in which all things come together and there is fulfillment, fulfillment of the promise And friends, we as a church, we care deeply about issues of justice, of advocacy and compassion, but we also recognize that all of those things will not be done in completion on this side of heaven because there is sin, there is wickedness, there is oppression, there is war, there are famines, there is strife, there are things that cause our world to not be whole. But yet we hold on to the promise And the hope that Jesus, God, will someday make all things right. That God will someday make all things new. So then what does it mean for us in the meantime? It doesn't mean that we twiddle our thumbs and say, well, you know, the effort that we put in now, I mean, Jesus is going to do it someday anyway. So let's just kind of sit back and relax and enjoy ourselves. Some people take that approach. But that's not what the Bible teaches us to do. To prepare means something different. You see, in Luke chapter 12, we read this. As Jesus is teaching his disciples, he says, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them food and allowance at the proper time? This is part of a story in which the disciples are asking, well, what does it mean for people to be ready? What do you mean? Like, well, the servant, the master goes away for a while, and we don't see, you know, corollary to God for a while in the flesh. Well, what does it mean for us to be faithful? It will be good for that servant, the one who was basically still doing all the work while the master was gone, the one who was doing all of the things to, to live out the will of their Lord while the Lord was gone. It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. So to be prepared is just to be faithful. Be faithful in doing the things that you know to do. Kids, in Sunday school, sometimes you learn things about like being kind to others, right? Or being nice to your sibling especially during winter break, right? (laughs) Be nice tomorrow when your sibling gets a present that you kind of like, right? We learn these things in Sunday school. We learn these things. That's part of being faithful. Faithful in the little things. Faithful when we are called to sacrifice for others. Faithful when we're called to forgive, even when forgiveness feels really hard. Faithful to care for those who do not have as we do. Perhaps during this holiday season, because you have given to certain organizations in the past, you get a gift catalog from like World Vision. A lot of our, you know, in our church, we often partner with World Vision and you get a gift catalog and you could say like, for $50, I'm gonna help this village buy a goat. You know, and like, you know what? That seems like such a very strange thing, but yet so tangible and real. This is faithfulness. Be faithful now, in the now, on this side of heaven as we prepare. Now there's another side of preparation, as we mentioned, to be like John and to prepare the way for Jesus. How will you prepare others for the love of God through Jesus Christ? Matthew in chapter 5 says, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. You know, the funny thing about this and the previous form of preparation is they are kind of the same. 
If you just do what you're supposed to do, if you just live the way you're supposed to live, if you just treat people the way you're supposed to treat people, if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you're allowing your light to shine. And not only are we preparing ourselves for the Lord, but we're preparing others to come to know the deep love of God that is for them. And this, friends, is what we celebrate today at Christmas Eve, that Jesus is here and Jesus is still coming. And we have an opportunity to prepare ourselves and to light the path to prepare others for a God that will never fail them, a God that will love them forever, a God that will save them, will rescue them, will bind the wounds and heal the brokenness, a God that will be there no matter what, a God that is Emmanuel with us and with our neighbors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for this miraculous birth that we celebrate at Christmas. And I thank you for the promise and the hope of your eventual return. Lord, may we prepare ourselves always by being faithful to what we know. Lord, you know that we are weak, not capable of living up to your standard all the time. But Lord, help us to try. And by your spirit, would you empower us to live in such a way that others might see that little glimmer of light, even as we light candles today. May that be a reminder of us being as little lights shining in the darkness as you were, that others might come to know the unconditional love and grace of God. Thank you, God, for your gift of your son. In Jesus' name, amen.
this year, the final day of anticipation for the birth of Christ. The angels declared in Luke 2.10, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great, great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us faith and hope as we await the fulfillment of your kingdom. When all things will be made new, when striving cease, when the broken are healed, when injustices, oppression, war are no more, come, Lord Jesus. Now let us light our candles as we focus our hearts and
Lord, it is by your Son, Jesus Christ, that we have been saved, not as a result of our own works or efforts, but by you. And through faith, you have come to save us. We thank you for this, the dawn of a story of grace that would last for eternity. Lord, may we carry this light of life, of love and grace to our homes, to our workplaces, to our schools, and to our neighbors. Lord, may we prepare the way for you into other people's lives, and may we prepare ourselves for you, because, Lord, we know that you're not done with us yet. There's a lot more that you've got going on, and, Lord, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you. Come, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God rest he merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. In Bethlehem in Israel this blessed babe was born And laid within a manger upon this blessed morn The witch's mother Mary did nothing taken scorn Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Fear nothing, said the angel, and nothing you are fright. This day is born a Savior, a pure virgin bright, to free us all who's trust in Him from Satan's power and might. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. You know I had to do it. Joy. Oh, tidings <laughs> yeah. of comfort and joy. Man, it's beginning to look a lot like wood. Follow my every step. This ain't just holiday music. This for my everyday. Celebrate holy day. 24 7, sister, son of God, laid in the manger just like a stowaway. And like an angel told them folks that moaning, don't trip. The devil about to get his world flipped. The poor, the weak, the ones without a voice. The worried, the meek, the ones without a choice. The slow to get up. The gangsters, the villains. The beggars and the thieves, even those that ain't willing, gon' see it. Believe it and receive it for the free. That's why I know that he was talking to me. Rest easy, baby. Let the choir sing for Jesus, baby. Merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were born astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Switch it up!